Now, first of all, whenever you use decision tree analysis, there are three things you need up front. Of course, you need the diagram. And as you can see, this is simply showing branches, hence the analogy of trees. But what you need to generate, either by speaking to sales and marketing or engineering, is some form of metrics. You need to know what the option benefits are. You need to know what the option probabilities are. And you need to know what the option costs are. So the first thing you need to do is to draw the diagram itself. And for that, you start over at the left hand side at this square box and you develop the branches from left to right. In this case, let's imagine that sales and marketing are considering the options of whether or not we should launch a new product in a product range or to consolidate what we've already got. Those are the two broad options they've come up with. If you've ever considered buying a car, You'll know that each year, manufacturers often bring out new models, but sometimes they merely enhance existing models. By the same token, you'll sometimes find that a manufacturer brings out a brand new model. And that's what we're suggesting here, not necessarily for the car industry, but for some invented company that has a range of products. So the option is either to have a new product or to consolidate an existing one, but there's sub branches of that. So these branches must be drawn first. After discussion with engineering, it's become evident that you could either do a standard detailed development or you could do what's known as a quick and dirty, a rapid development. So keeping to this new product branch alone, we needed to get engineering to tell us what are the estimated costs to do each of these. Well, the detailed development will cost £125,000, whereas the rapid development can be done for only £40,000. Follow your eyes over top right here. So assuming we're on the detailed development branch, you may just have one single number here. On the other hand, you may have something such as best case, worst case, and most likely case, or simply calling it best, average, and poor. And what marketing would need to do in this example would be to come up with, let's imagine these are quarterly sales figures, or it might be quarterly profits, or it might be quarterly revenue streams, whichever, as long as you keep them consistent throughout the entire model. So in the case of the detailed development, sales and marketing estimate that at the best case, we'll make half a million pounds revenue per quarter. If it doesn't pan out as well as that, they think that on average, we'd make at least 25,000 a quarter. If sales are really poor in a worst case situation, we may only make a thousand pounds a quarter. Now these are invented figures, you'd have to put your own in. And in this case, I'm using best, average and poor. As indeed I am down here and here. But just to make the point, you may just have a best case and a worst case. It's your choice. It must be done, however, on the logical options that you can see or calculate. So back up to the top here. The other thing you'll need to know, again, from sales and marketing, if you will, is that for each of these, what is the probability of achieving that? And the probabilities must always add up to 100% or 1, if you will, if you're using decimal fractions like I have. And I've added all of these figures for each of these. They're slightly different in each case, as would happen in the real world. So what we've done now, by perhaps talking with sales, marketing, engineering, and drawing the diagram itself, we've got a raw decision tree waiting for us to do the calculations. So let's do that next. They're fairly obvious, fairly straightforward. Whereas you would develop the decision tree from left to right, as I've talked you through, when you do the calculations, you work backwards. So let's start top right here. Well, there's a 40% chance of best case of getting half a million, let's say it's revenue per quarter, in which case that's 0.4 of that, which is 200,000 pounds. And we do that for each of these. So let me just plug those in. I think you understand exactly what's going on here. All right, so here we, in this case, we've got these three options. Now coming on to rapid development, again, best average and poor, and using the probability split, summing to 100%, we get these figures. Notice that since this top branch is related to a new product, these figures will be the same, despite the fact we're taking two different routes to get there. But when we come down to consolidate, there needs to be a new set of figures. As you might imagine, merely increasing the functionality of an existing model will certainly sell more, but maybe not as much as having a new product. And consolidating in terms of doing a cosmetic upgrade Again, you'd have different expectations of revenue from such a choice. And I've added these numbers in here. You'll see they're different to the top two. 
Yet again, we just calculate by multiplying the benefit, or it may be the risk, if that's the way you're using decision trees, against, in this case, 30% probability. And here's the numbers that you come up with. Let's do the same for down here. There's those two numbers. Now, because we're moving backwards, we now need, with each of these, to sum them up, because they're all independent approaches. And in terms of the detailed development, these sum to 210.2 thousand pounds. When it comes to rapid development, these sum to 55.7, you've got the idea, and dit over here, and dit over here. Now we're almost done. Again, starting at the top. So looking at these outcomes, we've got 210.2 thousand, but from that we need to subtract the detailed development, which gives us 85.2 thousand pounds for this option. What about rapid development? Again, deducting the cost of development, we get 15.7. Down here, subtracting 15K, we get 49.9. And down here, we get 6.4K. And that's it, done. We can now make a decision. What we're looking for in this case is the biggest number. And that clearly is the top one. So this would be the most valuable option. Now I've looked at the probabilities using revenue streams. These numbers in the green boxes could be replaced with risk costs and in which case we'd be looking for the lowest risk approach okay so that's decision tree analysis